Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to be giving my tips regarding the RD exam. I've been getting some Instagram DMs asking for my tips and my advice, so I'm hoping that this can be a helpful video for you watching this. I actually took and passed the exam, I want to say like a year and a half ago, it was in August of 2022, and as I'm filming this it is May 2024, so it's been a while, but I actually have been mentoring this dietetic intern at my work for the past, I want to say six, eight-ish months now, and she has been taking the RD exam, studying for it, and taking it multiple times. She's scheduled to take it again in the near future, and it just kind of reminded me of how stressful the whole process of taking the RD exam can be. I've definitely struggled with test anxiety in the past and luckily with this exam I think my anxiety was pretty low so I really want to just pass along those strategies that I use to you today so that hopefully this can be the least stressful experience possible. So with that said let's get into the tips. I'm gonna start with things that you can do before the exam so as part of the preparation process. And the first thing is to schedule an early exam. By that I mean schedule the earliest exam that is available in the day. So, you know, schedule an 8 a.m. exam over a 12 p.m. exam or a 3 p.m. exam. I didn't really think about this too much at the time because this is just something that I would do or like in college, for example, the professor would just make the exam 9 a.m. and it was like, well, I don't have a choice, so that's when I have to go. And when it came to scheduling my RD exam, I just wanted to get it over with. But as I've been mentoring this dietetic intern that I mentioned earlier, um, she said after I think it was her first time taking the exam that she wished she had picked an early time in the day because I think she said she picked like 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. and then she was stressed the whole morning and cramming for the exam, feeling like, you know, she had to study more. And so it just would have been nice to do it first thing in the morning and then have the rest of the day to do other stuff. And I totally agree. So when you schedule an exam really early in the morning, you don't have a ton of time to stress about it. You're not going to like tire your brain out from studying a ton, which is something I don't recommend doing. And then regardless of what happens, you have the rest of the day to do other things. My second tip is to schedule some plans for after the exam. This is really nice because it will give you something to look forward to. And if you don't pass, which some people don't on the first try or the second try or whatever it is, then you have something that can kind of distract you a little bit. For example, I had plans with my mom and my grandma from my mom's side to go out and get lunch at this restaurant after the exam. And that was really helpful even just for my mindset of thinking, you know, going into this exam, like no matter what happens, after this exam, I'm going out to lunch with my family. Tip number three is to plan a reward for yourself after you pass. This could be the same thing as the plans that you schedule but I think it should be something that is just for when you pass. And so that way, if you don't pass the first time, you will have a way to celebrate when you do pass. So for me, the reward that I planned for myself was I wanted to buy this t-shirt that said registered dietitian on it off of Etsy when I passed. So when I did pass, I came home, I bought the shirt, and I took a nap. And your reward can be anything. You just have to pick something that will feel exciting and like a gift to yourself. Tip number four is to drive to the exam location prior to the day of the exam. This just removes a lot of the stress from driving to somewhere that you've never been before. I definitely can get lost sometimes. Um, so it's just nice to kind of have an idea of where I'm going and what the building looks like and where I should park. 
So I definitely did that before my exam and that really lowered my anxiety. So I would definitely recommend doing that as well. My fifth tip is to pack a bag and also pick out your outfit the night before the exam. This way, when you wake up early in the morning, you don't have to think about that. You just know that everything that you need is lined up and prepared for you. Number six is to only review a small amount of material, if any, the morning of the exam. You don't wanna tire your brain out before you take the exam and start stressing yourself out with how much stuff you feel like you don't know. So what I do in my studying is I'll make a cheat sheet, um, not like a real one that you can bring into the exam, but I sort of think like, okay, if I could have an index card on this exam, what would I write on it? So in this case, I actually had seven pages. Granted, I wrote like really big on them, but I was just like, okay, if there's some stuff that I'm afraid of forgetting, that I wish I could bring in with me to this exam, you know, what information would that be? And then I put that on the paper. And so when I got to the exam location the morning of the exam, I just reviewed those papers. Although I can't remember if I reviewed every page or not, or if I skimmed it, or if I really was able to read it in depth, but I kind of just felt like I know what, I'm, what I know and, you know, I'm not gonna like learn something new the day of. I think if you're trying to teach yourself new information the day of the exam, then you probably didn't study enough and you should probably reschedule the exam, which of course, if you're doing that the day of, it's too late to reschedule the exam, but hopefully you know, like leading up to it, if you feel like you need more time or if you're good. And then that way, the day of the exam, you're not cramming. It's just more of kind of reviewing a few things that maybe aren't, they don't come as easily to you. Number seven is developing things to say to yourself as a sort of like positive mindset and self-talk to prepare yourself for this exam. This of course is variable. It just depends on the person of what works for you. But some things that I told myself and I'm looking down at my paper here cause I wrote them down cause it's been a while. But one thing I told myself was that the exam outcome has nothing to do with my intelligence, my worth, or my character. You don't need this credential to have a great life. If you fail, you can take the exam again, and the exam is passable. And so every time I would stress out about the exam, I would just tell myself these things, and there were things that I truly did believe, and it would just calm me down. I don't remember actually needing to say these things to myself during the exam, luckily. I think I was just so focused on the actual material and answering those questions that I didn't need to do any of that. But I think I did probably think some of those things when I was waiting for my score to pop up on the screen, like to tell me if I passed or failed. It's just nice to have some tools in your toolbox so that you can, you know, combat those stressful anxiety inducing thoughts when they come up. And my last tip, tip number eight, is something that you can do during the exam. It's actually the best piece of advice that I received before taking this exam, and that is to choose theoretical answers over practical ones. So for example, I found that on a lot of these questions, I was between two answers, and I had to try to figure out which one to choose because a lot of the RD exam questions, it's not like one answer is the obvious correct one, and the other three options are just obviously wrong. Like a lot of the answers are actually correct and you have to choose the one that is most correct. So that makes it hard to figure out which one of these two is the designated correct answer for this question. The advice that I received was to choose the answer that you think the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics would want you to choose. So that means that if you know, theoretically or, you know, in the books, you think it, that this answer would be the right one, even though this other answer might be more practical, it might be the one that you would choose more often, like in real life, you'd want to go with that first option. So those were all of my RD exam tips for today. I hope you found them to be helpful. I will link some of my other RD exam videos in the description below so you can check them out if you want. If you have any questions for me, feel free to leave them in the comments. You can also DM me on Instagram. 
I'm not that great at checking my DMs, but I will eventually check them and see it. But other than that, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one.